Okay, so what? recording has started. Go ahead, Olivier. All right, everybody, welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, we have a bunch of things to discuss today. So the first is few um, announcements. Few things that you need to be aware of is we are still in the process to, to remove ham charts that we are using from github.com slash ham slash charts. Um, while I migrated few of them, like Rafana primitives and so on, we still have to update the Nginx ingress controller. Um, and it means that um, it will require a little bit more work because we have quite a lot of application using it. And so we cannot just upgrade the chart. We have to read, uh, uh, remove it and then reinstall it. So we have a bunch of way to, to do it without having downtime, but it will require a little bit more work right now. Um, Sladina for some help on this, but I still have to work with him to, to deploy something new. Um, we may also take the opportunity to use maybe traffic or something else, um, but yeah. So that's the most important one. And the other two ham charts that I did not migrate are old proxy index. Um, those were used for last year uh, for the polling poll application that we used for the for the election last year. This application is not needed anymore, so we just removed those ham charts from our infrastructure. Um, so any question so far on this topic? Yeah, and then I guess we can continue. Uh, the second thing that I just want to highlight is we have we had a bunch of instabilities on ci.jenkins.io over the past few days. Um, those were um, for different reasons. The, the, the missed one is we enable, I'm not sure yet who and how we did that, but basically we enable uh, the wrong disk for Ubuntu machines. So the, the disk that we use were just a gigabyte of disk, which is pretty low. Um, and we should have be using, we should have been using a 100 gigabyte of disk um, because this is the way we, 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 we use biker images. Um, so now this is fixed. Um, so yeah, so far we should not have any issues with Ubuntu machines anymore, at least for the coming days. And the so, other thing is, so sorry, yeah. I was just going to say, when did you fix this? Because I was still having lots of issues up until like less than an hour ago. I had like 10 builds fail with full disk space. I went around deleting some agents and then just some of them I just kept rebuilding until I got ones that worked. But um, I, I so yeah, so maybe, so maybe the something is not fixed yet, apparently. Um, so basically what I did is I work on that this morning, my time, uh, European time, and I deleted all the old machine. I reprovisioned uh, Ubuntu machine from Seattle Jenkins IO, and I double checked that they had um, 100 gigabyte of disk space and it was the case. So, yeah, if you have a job that you can share, maybe I can investigate. And I was also looking from the Amazon console. Um, so yeah, I would be glad to, to investigate if something wrong is still happening there. Probably deleted now. Nothing looks too bad. There's one EC2 agent with four gigs free, which I think can quite easily go very quickly. I can look at I can look after the meeting. Um, any other things to, to raise? So we yeah. we know that we still have the EC2 agents that are unstable, and we still need more Windows disk space. This isn't this your change didn't do anything for Windows builds, no. right? They're still they're still on smaller images. Yep. Good. Good meeting. Um, last things regarding CI the Jenkins at IO. Um, yeah, so just to continue, this one, the next one is more for Daniel. So um, I investigated what was happening on CI the Jenkins at IO, and for some reason, um, the machine was um, in a wrong state. Um, it seems to be a lack of um, memory but I couldn't find any out of memory issues in the logs. So basically what I, what I did is I just um, increased the size of the machine and everything seems to be working just fine now. I don't see all the weird errors from the logs. Um, well, I saw home killer messages in the system log. So I would agree with that. Yeah. 
but I also I also saw a lot of weird um, error logs related to the Docker daemon. So initially, I thought that it was like some space issues or something like that. Um, but yeah, it seems it seems to be running since last week. So I would consider it as solved right now. Thank you. Um, next topic is regarding the Docker Hub um, Terms of Service. So um, the Linux Foundation reply last week, um, they basically said that they would be happy to, to sponsor the project uh, for that. But I also at the same time discovered that Docker Hub had uh, a sponsoring uh, plan for open source projects. So I, I sent them um, an application, um, but I haven't received any response at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm still waiting until the very last minute. And if you, if nothing is nothing clear happened there, I'd probably just uh, pay for at least one month and expense that to the Linux Foundation. But the good thing is, um, yeah, Linux Foundation is aware of that, and they are uh, up, I mean, they are okay to find a solution for the other project as well. So um, still ongoing effort on this topic. Um, now, when this happens, in it's November one. Is that right? Is November yep. one there? So the deadline is November one. Yeah. So does work to then go and make sure we dock a login everywhere and configure the secret everywhere and. Yeah, and another thing that needs to be working on is we are still using a bunch of Docker images from my uh, own uh, accounts. Um, and so we have to update those as well. Um, I was I was reviewing my Docker Hub account this afternoon, um, and let's say Helm file, for example, is published on my end. I mean, I have some a bunch of cleanup to do um, to push to the right location and use the right um, Docker image. Um, but I'm not sure yet if either I push them to Docker Hub or I use the GitHub um, Docker registry. So this is also another possibility. Um, but yeah, probably Docker Hub. There's been a number of issues with GitHub's implementation, I think. Um, Which kind of issues? If you have um, any document, because I uh, haven't actively seen a huge GitHub issue with interoperability problems between oh. anything that's not Docker, um, things like Container D, which Kubernetes is moving to default in the next, it's not Kubernetes, AKS is defaulting to, to Container D in the next version. Okay. Okay, good to know. I have to get yeah, that topic. Um, the next one is more for Garrett regarding Docker images um, and Windows. Yeah, that's progressing pretty well. Um, I have the Packer image with the, um, with the Windows update provisioner correctly working now. Um, so that's pushed up to Docker Hub. Um, the build's been updated to use that. Um, and I'm just putting a few images now, just testing that they're all working. Um, it's going to take about another hour or so to get through those. Um, but once they're there, we should be able to start trying out the builds again to see whether or not um, they build Windows Docker images properly. OK. Um, yeah, just on, on that topic, uh, we discovered this afternoon um, that um, Infrared CI did not reload the configuration, and it should. Um, I'm having stack trace related to that, so if someone is uh, able to help me looking at what's wrong there, um, yeah, some help is needed here. Because uh, if it's broken for infrared at CI, I would guess it's the same for release at CI and the other um, Jenkins sensors running on communities. Hi, Sladin. Hi. Um, the next topic is regarding the GFrog artifactory. Daniel, do you have any update here? I mean, what it says in this item. So uh, we got an analysis from Baruch from JFrog uh, about uh, traffic, popular artifacts, stuff like that. And when we looked at it, we discovered that just a handful of artifacts make up 30% of the total bandwidth used. 
um, when those artifacts are referenced in the tool installer metadata for the Allure plugin, which seems to be some sort of build tool or something. And what happens is if you run a build that uses Allure, your agent will download from the Jenkins artifactory directly. And these agents, if they're ephemeral, they will not have an M2 uh, cache or anything like that, but they will download every time. And that means um, we have hundreds of thousands or even millions of downloads for some of these command line tools, 15 megabytes each. So that accounts for 30% of the total bandwidth used. A week ago, I filed an issue and uh, pinged the maintainer of the plugin, Infra2772. And uh, we have not gotten a response until yesterday. So I filed, uh, I basically blocked downloads from repo Jenkins CI org of this tool. So anyone who relies on it will see their builds breaking. Um, and then we got a response from the maintainer this last uh, yesterday afternoon uh, offering to file a correct, correction pull request in the next few hours. I restored the downloads. Uh, I looked, you know, today around noon, no pull request filed. So I uh, blocked the downloads again and have no intention of restoring them because if there is a proper download location, we can do that on the crawler side, which maintains the uh, metadata, rather than ever having to allow downloads from repo Jenkins CI org again. And that's my current uh, plan here. I have still not heard from back from the maintainer again. Uh, I don't know what's happening there, uh, but given that this basically looks like it might actually be enough to make JFrog happy based on what the other usage stats looks like. Um, I will not uh, allow any compromises here um, if, if we maybe don't actually have to lock down things further, but uh, we haven't uh, discussed this with uh, Baruch yet. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the updates. And I'm really surprised by the amount of traffic used by Andrew. But yeah. Um, any question for Daniel? Nope. So let's move to the next major topic, which is the Jira um, upgrades, Jira migration, and Jira deprecation uh, at the same time. Um, oh, I it, sorry. Um, Mark, can you do an update on this? And yes, so this is test week. Uh, Anton Baranov of Linux Foundation reported uh, late last week that he had completed the the first migration, or he completed the first copy from our version to his 7.13 version. He was doing the upgrade uh, earlier this week. He reported during the upgrade he detected some missing images. Uh, they were the uh, images for our, what are they? A Lo Our... logo, logo and a bunch of attachments. Right, logo and avatars. That's what it was, logo and avatars. And so I provided him two gigabytes of a zipped file of the logo, tiny, and avatars, enormous. And hopefully that's enough for him to get us ready. This is test week. They had agreed to be ready for us this week. We're waiting for him to tell us. Uh, Daniel, I'm assuming you're a volunteer to help with the testing. The other people on this call were already nominated last week and consented to be part of the test team. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I have a, que a question about the test setup. Does that also... Um, so first of all, are all projects going to, and all data going to be present in the test environment? Yes, the intent was that all projects and all data should be visible. So for example, a crucial thing I was hoping you would check is, are the security reports correctly visible and correctly hidden to people that shouldn't be able to see them, those kind of things. So that this should be a full and complete, full and complete migration. Yeah, I would like that to be 
you know, that there is a basic validation of that being the case before the test environment is made accessible in the first place because ah. of the sensitive nature. I mean, um, right, it, right. You, you've just, got a just, just have an unprivileged account or go anonymous and type in any security issue ID and see whether you can see it. That would be very bad. Right, right. Good point. So let me take that as uh, ask Anton to validate to validate that um, trivial security exposures are not possible. So ju just to clarify, so the migration, they are restoring exactly the same um, machine that we had one weeks ago. So it's, a it's supposed to connect to the LDAP. So we are supposed to keep the same group, the same users. The only thing is the data will be outdated because we keep updating the Jira instance at the moment. Um, okay, normally, yeah, that's, that's great then. But I, but I know, think... And normally, we should also be using uh, the correct DNS record, so issues that Jenkins here at org, because we provide the information so they could uh, generate the lesson encrypt certificate using DNS, so it will not mess up with the current instance. So we should really be able to, to test it, uh, just uh, enforce the IP for a specific host name or whatever. So, yeah. You were saying, Mark? Uh, just, just that you, you described perfectly the intent I, I agree that Daniel's got the right approach to be concerned that while the intent is good, we really do not want this thing to be visible on the public internet with some trivial exposure of our security information. That would be bad. Definitely. Um, and it should be easy enough to confirm that that's not the case. Uh, it's just, you know, if, if we miss it, then we've saved a minute of time and uh, potentially lost a lot of confidential uh data exactly right i think you're i think that's a brilliant brilliant thing and i will certainly work with anton i need to talk to him anyway so this is a great excuse to do so and also something to clarify here is um we will not use in prediction the instance that anton restore um so if we validate that the migration is okay then we create a new machine and we restore so we do a new backup and we restore again so And then when we decide to, to do that backup, we'll have to plan a downtime because we have to be sure that nobody updates the new the old instance while we are restoring the new instance. Um, but yeah, it's that for the moment. Yeah, and that's that's a good pointer. The week of November nine is the uh, is the planned week that's trying to avoid the LTS release week, which is the prior week. That's all for me. Thanks, Olivia. Any questions? Yeah, I guess we can just skip to the next point, which is mirrors. There is nothing really new here, so I'll just uh, remove it from the notes. Um, I haven't worked on that, I think. Oops, sorry. Um, the latest information that, that we're not burning money is still uh, correct, right? So the fallback mirror does not cost a lot of money. That's no, no, la, la, yeah, yeah, it's still the case. Um, and that topic is fine. While you're talking about Azure money, we still have um, a broken process right now where the Linux Foundation is not correctly notified when they have to pay the bills. So we still have two bills that they have to pay. Um, but yeah, it's ongoing work. Um, I made a few changes to the permission that uh, the Linux Foundation as um, so they should be notified in the future, but we still have to actively monitor that to be sure that they receive the bill in the future. Last time I checked the Azure, um, yeah, we were really good. Um, any question? So we can move to the LTS build process and release candidates. Um, Mark, do you have anything that you want to bring here? There are two things. So first, um, sorry to see, but congratulations to Oliver Gonja. He's having twins. As the father of twins, I want you all to know that that was the most instructive thing I ever had experienced as a parent. Twins changed my life completely. So. <laughs> 
So he's having twins and therefore uh, he won't be our release officer after December 3rd. Um, that means that we need to figure out, find what we'll do in terms of where we execute the acceptance test harness and how we construct release candidates. And, and I think we want to do the release candidates inside our release automation info we already have, but it'll require some development work. Do you have an idea what are the requirements for the acceptance test harness execution? Uh, well, I know what I see on ci.jenkins.io. When it runs on ci.jenkins.io, it is eight hours of blocking use of all of three, four, or five high memory machines. So it's a very heavy demand. Uh, and, and so I think we may want to consider a separate cluster or a separate place so that its resource demands can scale up and down without disrupting typical plug-in builds. Mm, we have water scaler and they have a special yeah. notebook for it. Yeah, we already, uh, we already, we already have the auto scaler on the release at Seattle Jenkins today, so we could, we could add there. And the, the only question is, do we need to run acceptance test harness on release.ci? On release? I don't, I don't think so. I don't see what, I, there's nothing that, nothing that I know of in that harness execution that is sensitive. So I don't think it needs to be on release.ci. At least okay. that's my perception. Tim, your comments? I think ideally it could be triggered by it. Like just as part of it publishes the candidate and then we trigger it would be nice. Just to, so you don't have to um, do any more manual steps. It's just, it doesn't, I don't think it has to be hosted there, but it. But it might be easier because I'm not sure whether we want, we don't really want to disrupt everyone on ci.jenkins.ai when we're running it. Or especially if you're running it, you don't want to get stuck behind 100 core builds. So. Release of CI could be convenient as it could be easy to run it there. Mm -hmm. The results and it would mean that results are only available inside the VPN unless we publish them. But yeah, that that's my challenge with release.ci. I, I feel like acceptance test harness is already high maintenance and low visibility. And my worry is that if it's be if its results are behind release.ci that it will be very hard to get people to take action to correct failures that are detected in it, even when the failures are real. I'm worried that there are enough failures in there that are fake, that are false failures, you know, that are misleading. That's a good point because we saw in the past that uh, when a job is failing and it's not really visible to a lot of people, then it's, 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 it's more difficult to fix it, so. RC.ci.jenkins.io and it runs the RC and runs the tests. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we still have to think about that. Uh, these candidates. And we can still, we can still build them, build the RCs on releases. It's probably easiest. Right, right. Yeah, we could deep. have a public instance that is rc.ci.jenkins.io that's visible. Yeah. What? What is it used for? When did you deploy that one? No, 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 no. Could, could, could. Ah, could. Sorry, sorry. Could, could. could. Sorry, 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 sorry. Could, could. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just a what? I don't remember about that that's, specifically. You don't have such a thing. Um. Yep, and the other thing regarding the release candidates, do we really have, do we need anything more than what we already have with the release environment? I mean, if it's just adding a new profile, that would be not, that would be easy. So currently the RC is published to snapshots is the only difference. It's, so it doesn't get, doesn't get published to any releases repo. Um, so it needs some changes in the get Jenkins version. Um, because if we are just if we are just pushing the the risk candidate to a different Maven repository, um, this is something that could be done at the profile level. We just provide different settings. Yeah, I mean, it's basically the profile and just figuring out where things go. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like an easy way. I mean, it doesn't sound like really difficult to fix. 
That'd be good because it's our last thing using mirror, mirror, legacy mirrors, I think. We yeah. can stop seeing the uh, HTTP links. Great. So we could possibly have things like automatic mail in this publication of the RC as well, or at least a script. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's take some more time to think about that. Um, any last suggestion regarding this topic? Um, yeah, then I'm really curious about the, the following point, which is Azure Credit Offer. Um, have you discussed about that with Microsoft? I mean, is there any opportunity there? Yeah, so I have a meeting today with Kayla Linville, our customer success manager. She initiated the meeting. Um, she's trying to explore, is there a way she could submit a proposal to Microsoft to ask them to fund the project's infrastructure to some level? And I'll have that discussion with her. Olivia, you're welcome to join. I assumed I can talk these business things without bothering you. It's, we, we want them to give us money and she needs to act as our advocate to ask them to give us money. I don't, and, and, I, I mean, yeah, I already had this, this this discussion several times with Microsoft. So I don't think um, my present will be more useful. So great. Yeah, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not holding terribly high hopes for success, but it's harmless to have the conversation and it helps, yeah. helps get her involved. Yeah, okay, good to know. And yeah, just keep us in touch with that topic. Um, the next one is something that I, that I put on hold for quite a long time. So um, I fixed a bunch of Puppet codes in our infrastructure. So one of the things that you should have noticed now is when Puppet change something, it notify RC. It will be easier to track when an update is not done. Um, the main reason to that is because the Puppet master is running in a hidden place. So um, it's not always easy to know if a change has been correctly applied or not. So um, the second thing is we still have a bunch of improvement that I would like to do is one of them is using Let's Encrypt with the DNS method. So we could have real certificate for cert.ci, the Jenkins.io, um, for uh, Puppet Master and, and a bunch of other services. Um, so yeah, so I hope this more than welcome on this topic as well. Um, but yeah, more more things should be coming um, here. The, we still have a major work that need to be done for package agent in your machine, um, because the puppet agent is still disabled there, and because we did a bunch of manual changes, we have to be sure that once we reapply puppet agent, we do not hold back changes and fixes on that machine. Um, but I don't think I will have the time to work on that right now. It just, I'm just I'm looking for small um, improvement. And, and while I'm also talking about puppet maintenance, I'm planning to use update CLI to also update Docker images there um, in the puppet, in that puppet repository. So I, I did the fix needed um, to use it. Um, so it should be, I should be able to enable a bunch of configuration there. So yeah, that's all for me on that list. And we are running over time. So any last question before we end up this meeting? What's the backup situation of package Jenkins IO? Is that this getting backed up? So um, if you're talking about packages, um, they are uh, replicated in several locations. Uh, one of them is archive.jenkinsci.org uh, and the other one is um, uh, the communities cluster. I double check. So we have, I mean, they are back up in different locations. Okay, thank you. Um, but so while, Daniel, you're, you, yeah, while you're talking about this one specifically, and it's something that we have to improve on the Puppet codes, right now, when we upload, we upload to archive and we upload to the uh, OCOS and Mirrors. And OCOS and Mirror is the only mirror that has a nursing daemon running which means that when people, um, when someone want to add a new mirror, they just have to synchronize with OCOS and mirror, which means that they do not contain every um, artifact that we have on package.jenkins.io. They only sync with um, 
artifacts that were published over the last year, I think. So there are mirrors that delete automatically files older than a year, others not. So that's why um, some files are available on old mirrors and not necessarily on every mirrors. But something that I would like to do is I would like to enable um, rsync uh, on archive.jenkins.ci.org, so, uh, or maybe another service. But the idea would be to allow the mirror to synchronize the full content and not only um, those that were created over the last year. So we would have more people who back up our, our packages. Cool, I'm gonna go. Yep, bye bye. So I propose to end uh, to finish the meeting now, um, unless uh, last topic that you want to bring one time, two, three, then thanks for your time. Uh, have a great day, great evening for other people and uh, see you in RSC. Bye bye.